It wasn't all fun and games on the Oregon Trail. Some really messed up things happened on those journeys, and it's a lot worse than just dying of dysentery. In truth, there wasn't much conflict between the Native American tribes and early pioneers, who were mostly fur traders and missionaries. But that's not to say there wasn't the occasional violent encounter, especially once settlers started heading west and claiming land for themselves. One such violent encounter involved the ill-fated Utter Van Ornum wagon train, which would go down as the deadliest wagon train in the trail's history. Led by Elijah Utter, the group included four families, 21 children, and a few former soldiers. They were attacked near the modern-day border of Oregon and Idaho on September 9, 1860, and 11 died in the two-day confrontation. According to the story, the soldiers with the group took the first opportunity to take the best horses and escape, leaving the party with a broken defense. The group scattered, and one of the soldiers made it to a military camp outside Fort Dowells to sound the alarm. Over the weeks that followed, the rescue parties encountered several starving survivors. But the worst was a camp of people who had been so desperate for food that they had resorted to eating their dead. Colonel George Wright, who oversaw the rescue mission, later said the whole wagon train likely would have been able to defend themselves during the initial attack if it wasn't for the cowards who fled. The National Park Service has described the Oregon Trail as, quote, this nation's longest graveyard. It is estimated that 1 in 10 travelers didn't survive their trips, and the National Oregon-California Trail Center says the 2,000-mile passage averaged around 10 deaths per mile. There was just as much dysentery and cholera as your MS-DOS family faced, but there was also another problem, a lack of gun safety classes. That's not a joke. Blue Mound, Kansas was the site of what's purported to be the first accidental gun death on the Oregon Trail and it happened to the ironically named John Shotwell. According to historical records, Shotwell's deadly injury occurred as he was pulling a gun from the back of his wagon muzzle first. When the weapon unexpectedly discharged, he was fatally shot in the chest. But he didn't die immediately. It reportedly took Shotwell over an hour to pass away, in full possession of his senses. Shotwell was far from the only person to die from an accidental gunshot on the trail. Behind diseases, they were the second leading cause of death for Oregon Trail pioneers, so it was considerably more likely that travelers would be killed by their own weapons than by Native Americans. Not only is that fact surprising, it's also a little embarrassing. The Oregon Trail may have been dangerous, but when it comes to the death toll, travelers were often their own worst enemies. And, and, even if you survive all those things, you know what else can kill you? The f***ing doctor! Settlers traveling the Oregon Trail carried standard medicines like castor oil, peppermint essence, rum, opium, and whiskey, all of which were useful to at least take your mind off the fact that you were dying. Granny medicine, essentially home remedies passed down from mother to daughter, was common, and some things, like using peppermint essence to calm an upset stomach, actually worked. But the problem was that it was typically only the women who knew these remedies. When they died or got sick, the men were left to make up things and see what worked. Get out, you quack! Plenty of people had the misfortune of encountering quack doctors on the trail, too. Edwin Bryant, a writer who recorded many observations from his times on Overland Trails, told the tale of a boy who had his leg crushed by a wagon wheel. The injury was treated by a man who tied some linen and a few planks around it. Nine days later, the boy, quote, called to his mother that he could feel worms crawling in his leg. In other words, he felt maggots eating him. Bryant helped hack off the leg with a butcher knife and a handsaw, but the boy ultimately died of his injuries. As Bryant put it, quote, the child was dead. His miseries were over. That's one way to spin it. Nice work, team. When Brigham Young and his Mormon followers found what would later become Utah, they thought they had found paradise on Earth. All they needed to do was populate the place with Mormon converts. The plan was simple. British and Scandinavian converts who were too poor to buy wagons would be invited to load all their worldly possessions onto a handcart, push them across the U.S., and try to make the cross-country journey in only 60 days. Sounds great, right? Think again. As writer David Roberts wrote in his book Devil's Gate, the Mormon handcart expeditions were, quote, the most deadly chapter in the history of westward migration in the United States. The ambitious-sounding operation was poorly planned, which would almost be funny if so many people didn't suffer as a result of the neglect. There were no supply stations, carts broke down better than they rolled, Salt Lake City officials had no idea who was coming, 
and travelers weren't prepared for doing the work of hunters, pioneers, and oxen all at the same time. Between 1856 and 1860, ten handcart companies traveled the trail, and two, the Martin and Willie companies, suffered heartbreaking tragedies. There were 1,100 people in those two companies alone, and they didn't set out until August. When winter arrived, they were buried under feet of snow. Hundreds died, and those who survived lost arms and legs to frostbite. Despite the unnecessary tragedy of the Mormon handcart episode, there's a fascinating footnote that comes out of all of it. Two survivors were 10-year-old Anne Campbell Giles and 12-year-old Maximilian Parker. They lived, met, married, and had a son you probably know of, Butch Cassidy. No wonder he was so tough. Just look what his parents went through. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite historical events are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.